Okay, we're just looking to see if everything's going here. We're getting started. Okay. Everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm just waiting to see. Um, some folks are going to join me and find me here while I'm live. Um, and so I'm Sophie Alexander in the Shoshawama Center of Ithaca. Thank you for joining me. Um, and we're waiting. Yep. Yeah. It's watching, waiting, seeing, making sure folks find us on the Facebook page. Great. I see a couple, a couple folks hopping on. So that's excellent. Um, I know this technology can be a little funky. <laughs> Um, so today I'm going to be talking all about the importance of zinc and particularly the role that zinc plays with our immunity and with um, uh, viruses in particular. And uh, so let's we'll wait a couple more minutes. A few more people finding us. Yay! Great. So glad you're watching. And um, this is a really important topic. Yeah, I think it's, it's key for most people. Um, and can be something that we really can do to take control of our health at this time and really make sure that our body is prepared for anything that it encounters because we do encounter all sorts of viral challenges um, regularly, right? And so I very much come from the perspective of to stay healthy and um, have your body handle whatever comes its way is to really make sure that you are not deficient in key areas that are necessary, especially for immune health. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking about a key mineral. It's really already known well for viral immune deficiencies, and that is zinc. Um, so you might already know or have, have personal experience with um, the fact if, you know, if you start getting a common cold, might take some zinc lozenges along with um, vitamin A or vitamin C or especially living here in the Northeast, um, making sure that you take vitamin D, right? And these are all kind of known, known things to address colds, viruses that we get on a regular basis. But what's really interesting about zinc um, is that zinc is known for blocking the replication of coronaviruses. So coronaviruses is a broad category of different kinds of viruses and COVID-19 is a coronavirus. Um, and so what it, I mean by that statement is that zinc blocks the mechanism used by the virus to replicate itself once it gets inside your cells. So it's really important to make sure and and I'm gonna be talking more about how you can do this to make sure that you are getting enough zinc in your diet and that you do not, that you aren't deficient, right? Because then, you know, if you do get exposure um, to this virus, you know, your, your body is going to have the tools to have it not um, affect you seriously, right? And significantly. So top food sources of zinc are meat, especially red meat, shellfish, especially oysters, um, legumes such as chickpeas and lentils, um, seeds, particularly pumpkin seeds. I talk to people a lot about pumpkin seeds just as a good snack and a way to get um, both zinc and um, magnesium. Hemp seeds are also a good food-based source of zinc. Um, nuts, um, example cashews are higher in zinc and almonds and eggs are also a good source of zinc um i say the highest is the meat particularly red meat so it's so important to not be scared of red meat um really want to make sure that you're eating healthy red meat and what i mean by that is grass-fed ideally local locally raised um antibiotic free you know meat like that and um, not highly processed meat. And having that in your diet is actually very helpful, especially for sources of zinc. Um, so unfortunately, because so many people eat such a highly processed food diet, um, and you know, there's so many 
confusions about diet. And so a lot of people avoid red meat or, um, you know, avoid eggs because they're worried about cholesterol, things like that. You know, zinc deficiency is common. In general, mineral deficiency is very common. So zinc deficiency is common. Um, and also, you know, most people who have taken medications long term are zinc deficient. Um, these drugs apparently cause or contribute to zinc deficiency. So it's definitely why there's a concern in terms of, of people who are older, people who've been med on medications longer, um, zinc deficiencies is a real issue um, and can contribute to why they're more susceptible to viruses. Yeah. So what can you do about it, right? How can you um, find out if you're zinc deficient? Well, so of course, if you know a nutrition response testing practitioner and can get your body assessed through that technique, you can absolutely be determining a whole variety of deficiencies and be addressing them. But of course, right now with um, more of the stay at home policies going on and things like that, you know, I'm currently not seeing clients at the office and not doing the nutrition response testing. So there is this wonderful zinc test that you can take, which can help you just from, from home identify whether or not you are zinc deficient. So um, I'm using the one from Standard Process because that's the main, um, Whole food supplement company that I work with and um, comes in this little box, this zinc test box. And what it is, is, is basically this is a zinc liquid. So I open up the box here, it's my, my zinc liquid. And it comes with a little dropper that you can use too. But um, how you do the zinc taste test is you pour two teaspoons of this liquid right into your mouth and you hold it there for about 10 seconds. And the question is, do you taste anything? All right, so if you get no taste from um, putting a liquid zinc directly into your mouth and holding it there for taste for 10 seconds, that really does indicate that you have zinc deficiency. Um, and it's important to address immediately, especially right now with everything going on. We wanna build up those zinc stores um, as quickly as possible. If you get a delayed taste, um, um, then that also does indicate deficiency. It's just not as severe. If you taste it immediately, you know, and it can taste different for different people. Some people um, just feels, uh, I think most commonly sort of metallic-y taste, people say. Um, so if you get a taste right away, well, good for you. You know, you are um, getting enough zinc through your diet. Um, but it's very common. I would say majority of people don't taste anything at all. And so what is indicated then for you is that you need to take a teaspoon of this liquid twice a day. Um, and you do that, I, I recommend, I mean, I just recommend doing it straight because you wanna do that until it starts to taste strong to you. And that's the fastest way to build up your deficiency. And it means like once you start to taste it strongly, um, you have adequate stores and that's wonderful, right? And then we want to maintain that. Um, and so then you have a maintenance dose of taking it as a teaspoon a day or, you know, once you've run out of the liquid in this container, you can, and if you prefer, you can switch over to a tablet. One of the main ones I use is called zinc liver chelate from Standard Process. And that's pretty common for us to use here in the office and, and more, more commonly dose um, when we're doing the nutrition response testing. Um, but what I like about this um, liquid test, especially for the more severely deficient, it's the best way to build up your stores quickly. And I strongly feel that this is something that everybody should do, especially if you have um, people who are, who are elderly in your life. Um, they should take take the zinc test test and and just know right and and take action because we're at a time right now with um, so much concern about health and concern about viral exposure. Um, but, you know, there are always going to be viruses, there are always going to be exposures. And really the number one thing we can do to take care of ourselves is to make sure that these things like zinc deficiency, other mineral deficiencies are being properly addressed and that we are actually truly healthy and, and thus our body can fight off or off whatever 
it needs to fight off. So um, thanks for joining me, folks. That was my little brief bit about, about zinc, and I so appreciate you joining me. I hope you find this is helpful. Please share it with whomever you think would benefit from it in their life. Um, this is a key time for people to be taking action about their health because, um, as I was saying earlier, this is what we can do to really make a difference in, in how our bodies respond um, to the pandemic. And so um, I am actively still taking clients. You know, I'm doing it all virtually and doing nutritional coaching, and it's a, it's a wonderful way to get started um, improving your health and taking back taking back the control. Um, all right, so be well, take care, and I will see you all um, for another one of these sessions next week.